God is good. All the time. God is good. You know, in the area where we've talked before about our calling, everybody has a calling. I mean, God said many are called, but few are chosen. Amen? So many people think that they're chosen already. God chose you to fulfill the calling. If you're not willing to go through the process of the calling, he doesn't choose you for a position. Does everybody understand? So in the process of the calling, there's a requirements that are there. There's a process of the calling requirements. In other words, there are certain things that you and I must meet. There are guidelines to meet to fulfill our destiny. Amen? If we're not willing to fulfill the calling in that area where we're being trained, we'll never fulfill destiny. So there's requirements all the time. When you meet the requirement, you advance. If you don't meet the requirement, and you don't meet the requirement, and you don't meet the requirement, you go back instead of forward. Is everybody okay? In 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. So we can call this either the process of your calling or requirements of destiny. Any way you want it. <laughs> Whatever is easier for you. Amen? But I'm going to call it requirements of destiny. First Peter chapter 1. Because there are requirements. Everything in the kingdom... A requirement must always be met. First Peter chapter 1, is everybody there? In verse 6, requirements of destiny. Let's speak it. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith, everyone say genuineness of my faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire or trial, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly, and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we see that we will go through fiery trials. Again, I want to express that trials are not always because we've done something. Amen? Even when it says that we fall into afflictions because we go astray. Remember, God is always correcting us in one way or another. But he uses everything for the good. He turns everything, even when we do stupid stuff. As long as we repent, amen, he'll turn it to the good. But the longer you take to repent, the more you're going to reap. So in this, you and I are going to go through trial. We're going to go through testings because faith is your connection to him. See, if your faith is connected, then there's nothing impossible. So everything in the area is to get us reconnected in everything that we do. So that we walk, talk, express Him. Amen? There is an exchange being made. So trials, firing, tribulations, all of these things are to do two things. Not only expose your enemy, but to expose impurities in us. Amen? Why? So we can cut them loose. How else are you going to know who your enemy is if you don't get go through it? Amen? You know, when you get attacked, you don't run. You find out who it is. What is it? And you go after it. You chase it. You remove it. Because behind every attack is a demon. Amen? People don't realize that. Oh, it's just something that I ate. Not always. It's something you agreed with. Always. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. In 
in verse 1. requirements of destiny we have a call so in the process of your call you're going through training and reigning as long as you maintain you will be chosen to fulfill destiny how many well i was chosen already yes you were chosen by god to fulfill the calling amen in the process of the calling is training that's why many people are still in the calling 30 years later, and they're still in the calling. They never set a position in the kingdom because they've never fulfilled the calling. They've not passed enough tests. They haven't been qualified. They're still doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, touching and agree with things, not willing to seek certain things. This is kingdom business. It's a military operation. We are in a war. And God is looking for warriors. And if you're not willing to be trained up on the war as a warrior, you ain't going to fulfill a position. Amen? Does everybody understand that? This is vital. Man, look what's going on in the world right now. Too many children are being taken. Too many people are being murdered. And too many people are filling their own desires, building their own empires, walking by all kinds of destruction. Of God's people. What does the Lord say? My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. People are too busy fulfilling their emotional feelings. Living by how they feel. Fulfilling their own desires and not even knowing it. Romans 1. Romans 8 verse 1. Let's read it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do, do not walk according to the what? The flesh. See the flesh has a destiny. The end of the flesh's destiny is death and hell. Even if you say you're a Christian. Who you serve when you die is where you go. You better make sure you're serving the right God when you give up your last breath. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. There's two destinies right there. One leads to life, one leads to death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What is the law of the spirit of Christ? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That is a law. That is a requirement that must be met in everything you and I do. Every decision must be a denial of self. It must be approved by him. Hallelujah. Verse 3. For the law could not do in it that was weak, for what the law could not do when it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement. That means there's something that you must meet. Amen? Of the law might be fulfilled. When you see the word might, that means cooperate with. If you're not willing to cooperate, because that is the price. Cooperation. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Why? Because the flesh has a destiny of itself. And so does the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. See, there's two destinies, isn't there? Hallelujah. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and death. Peace. So the end results of these two destinies, one is death, one is life, one is hell, one is heaven. It's that simple. Amen? So these requirements of destiny, everything that you and I do in the kingdom is always meeting a condition. Always meeting a condition. To what? Advance. If you don't want to advance, then you don't have to worry about meeting conditions. But it's also in maintaining the path, isn't it? Amen? It's in maintaining the path. Where? Getting home. Remember, the word believe means to follow. You can't say you're a believer and still go do the things that you want. Remember, you gave up your life. You don't have a life anymore. And it's no buts. But, but, but. You gave up your life. 
You said, here, take my life. Rescue me from hell. Far be it, we should take it back. You go into hell then. See, people don't talk about hell enough. They candy coat too much. Oh, it's all going to work out. There isn't one unbeliever in hell. Everyone that's there now is a believer. It's too late, though. No rescue. Philippians 3. Work out if you do what God asks you to do. If you meet the conditions. Meeting the conditions brings advancement. Everybody okay? Praise God. Nobody ran out yet. I guess we don't need to lock the door then. <laughs> Glory. Everybody wants to know the truth, right? It's amazing when you tell the truth, people don't like it. I have people tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me anything. I don't want to know nothing. They think that they're gonna, if they don't know anything, they're going to escape. <laughs> no. Even stupid goes to hell. Philippians 3.17. Hallelujah. Brethren, join in, my, in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a what? Pattern. For many walk whom, whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the what? Enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is what? Destruction. Whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame. Who set their mind on what? Earthly things. In other words, their destiny is of the flesh. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So there's a destiny of destruction and a destiny of peace, isn't there? There's a destiny of glory. Every destiny leaves a legacy. Every destiny leaves a legacy. So we must fulfill the requirements to fulfill destiny. But again, in the calling, you and I are in the calling. As we're in the calling, we're in the training. As we're in the training, as we complete what he asks us to do, we're faithful with it, and it releases the promise. And he finds a place, a position, Amen, where you are chosen. Is everybody okay? And Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Hallelujah. And Jeremiah never turned into a bullfrog. Amen. <coughs> Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord says. Verse 11, let's speak it. For I know the thoughts that I have, that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is what? Destiny. Amen? Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with what? All of your heart. When you search for me with what? All of your 
her. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from the captivity. I will gather you from all nations, from all places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Now, we know he's talking about Israel, but he's also talking about us. Many of us have come from other nations. You and I were taken captive by the powers of darkness. But he drew us back at this specific time. Right now, you and I were in darkness. You know, you and I were hidden in darkness. Because many times we've cried out for help, but God didn't come yet. It's not that he didn't forsake us. He kept us hidden. And then pulled us out a specific time and said, okay, now is the day of salvation. I've called you out of darkness into my glorious light. Now fulfill your calling and training so I can choose you for a position. Amen? Oh, happy days. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Meeting the conditions which are requirements of destiny. In verse 11. <clears throat> Is everybody there? In him also we have obtained in a what? An inheritance being what? Predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Now just you are and I are predestined. We predestined to be called. We were chosen to fulfill the calling. That we may be chosen for a position. Everybody get that, right? Just because we're predestined doesn't mean you're going to make it. That means you must cooperate. You must what? Cooperate. That is the price. And 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of of his glory. Hallelujah. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and what? Revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, who is, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. That's why God is raising up headless warriors, because he is the head. We do not live out of the head, we live out of the spirit. Amen. So we have an inheritance. There are requirements to fulfill. There is the counsel of his will. The counsel of his will is always releasing by the Spirit of God counsel, correction, and direction. As we complete and fulfill these counsel, corrections, and directions, that is a part of our calling. As we're faithful, then he releases a promise. As we complete something, he releases. As, he can, as we complete something, he releases. Remember, we must meet every condition. There's even conditioning and healing. There's condition in everything. Romans chapter something.
Romans 8. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 28. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28, is everybody there? Glory. Let's speak it together. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called. Are you called? That means invited, right? You're called. You're invited to fulfill purpose of destiny. Amen? To those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yes, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, nothing ever separates uh, God's love towards me and you. But the enemy separates your love towards him. He's always breaching love if we allow it. It only takes one agreement with the enemy to throw you right off course. That's all it takes. One selfish agreement. One selfish decision can throw you right off course. Thank God he's merciful. That's why we repent quickly. But again, the longer you take to repent, the further you're off course, the harder it is to get back on course. So you and I are predestined. We are called to fulfill the calling to ful and then purpose and destiny. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Guidelines to meet our destiny. I'm going to share a few of them that I really believe that are vital. In verse 35, Hebrews 10, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. In other words, don't give up. For you are in need of what? Endurance. The first thing I really believe that we've got to do is be able to endure. That means patient. Go for it. Don't let anything throw you off. Steadfast. Endure. It has nothing to do with what you think. It has nothing to do with what you feel. You're standing on the truth now. For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the what? Promise. See, after you, after you obey, then he releases. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith. And if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. Endurance. Endurance to what? Endurance to put on your full armor of God every day. Endurance to seek the Lord first, that he is first. Endurance to stay connected. Endurance to disconnect first. 
Amen? Endurance, no matter what, you're a, fir you're a first seeker and you're a first striker every day. Endurance, because without endurance, can you advance? No. Hebrews 12, why we're in Hebrew. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us. And let us run with what? Endurance, a race that is what? It is set before me and you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the, th of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, so you're going to have to endure kicking a butt, slapping the back of the head. You're going to have to endure correction. So many people get so offended. Oh, I was corrected. Praise God. Remember, correction brings protection. Remember when we were little kids? You know, not too long ago. Like last week or so. I don't know. Remember, we were always corrected, right? Amen? Come on, we were little flesh creatures. Let's, let's be real. That's why we were all called little devils. You little devil, you. We were always doing, and they, we'd, we'd always say, yes, yeah, yeah, they'd do whatever. You know, we were always led by the flesh. And the only way that we really received anything is when we got slapped. Yo, that's what brought fear. Amen? Because we didn't have no fear of God, but we served, feared that whatever was there going to hit you. It's called a point of contact. And it was not a handkerchief or a napkin, you know. Hallelujah. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> Praise God. So in this, he says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons and daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Every one of us goes through the chastening. No one's perfect, but we're working to perfection. Amen? So he's going to correct us in everything. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and what? And live. <laughs> for they indeed for a few days chasten us as seen, but Best let to them, but he who is for our profit, that we may be partakers of his what? Holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. It's called suffering. How many of y'all love suffering? <laughs> Praise God. Now, no chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields a what? Peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Wow. Trained by it. So chastening is a part of your training. Is training a part of your process of the calling? Yeah. Are there areas that you're going to have to meet requirements to advance? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So the first requirement, I truly believe, is endurance. You're going to have to endure everything. That's denying yourself. Amen? Put yourself 
last and Jesus first. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And verse 1. Everybody there? Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to what? Walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification, your separation unto him. That you should should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. So the second requirement, I truly believe, is sanctification. Sanctification, separation. That's what the Lord says. Come out from among them. Don't touch anything unclean. Don't agree with be, be careful who you associate with. I know there's a lot of people that call themselves believers, but they live a life of carnality. Stay away from them. And whatever you do, don't get counsel from the flesh. Hallelujah. Sanctification. You know, one of the things about endurance is discipline. Amen? It's discipline. When you, are, when you live a life of endurance, you're living a life of discipline. You are enduring no matter what. And these are things that are essential in relationship. What? Endurance. Discipline, amen, and sanctification. Because without discipline and sanctification, you can't have a relationship. It's always broke. It's long distance. You want to be as close to the Lord as possible. He wants us close to him. But there's so many things that cause people to distance. Long distance relationships. Everybody okay? Second Corinthians chapter 6. This is where he warns us in verse 14. See, these are things that will interfere, nullify, delay, separate you, and defile us also. He says what in verse 14? Don't be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with what? Darkness. And what accord is Christ with Belial? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people if they do what? See, when you see therefore, it means if they'll do. If you will what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean. Can you touch something unclean in your thoughts? That's where it always starts, isn't it? Amen. And then I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. These are warnings. Why? Because they'll alter or delay your destiny. Amen? Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. In verse 8. Ephesians 5, verse 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. How are you going to find out what is acceptable to the Lord without relationship? Amen? See, you can read the Word of God and get some guidance, but it's the Spirit of God that's going to lead you. Amen? Amen? That's why we must be led by the Spirit of God. And believe me, there's a lot of people going out there doing what the Word says, but it's out of God's time. 
So it's out of God's will. There's a lot of people on the street beating people up with the Bible. But they've never fulfilled their calling. And they've set themselves in position. And now everything they do, see, when you set yourself in position, nothing is accountable. There's nothing counted. Or well, all burn in the fire when it's all tested. Only what he sets and chooses position is what is accountable. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with what? Wine. And which is what? Dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. Now, how are you going to get filled with the Spirit? You assemble in worship. Amen? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting to one another in the fear of God. Remember, vitally important, being filled with the Spirit of God. That means you must become a worshiper. If you're not a worshiper, because the Father searches those who worship Him. Amen? Worship Him. Bringing worship to the Lord makes an exchange. There's exchange. You are now exchanging your presence for His presence. When His presence comes, there's a fear of the Lord that comes. It's reverence, honor, and respect to His presence. See, your number one desire should be His presence. If your number one desire is not His presence, then there's something wrong. There's something separating you. Until you meet that requirement that his presence is everything to you. It's not what you can do for him. It's what he does through you. Amen? Hallelujah. So the third requirement is being filled with the Spirit and become a worshiper. Amen? Why? Because those who are led by the Spirit are called sons of God. Hebrews 10. Hebrew. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering. For he who promises, faithful. And let us consider one another in order to what? Stir up love and good works. And he tells you how. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approach. In other words, don't forsake to assemble. Don't forsake to assemble. This is where we get released. We get impartations. This is where we're exchanging through worship. The corporate worship is what brings the anointing. Let me tell you, the enemy's first purpose is to separate you from the presence of God. Everything else becomes priority. I can tell you honestly, that if you're not getting in God's presence twice a week, you're going to be easily misled. Your emotions will start taking over again. You'll start leading, oh, this is what I feel like. Not even realizing it. You'll try and reject your feelings, but your feelings are going to start to take control. Is everybody all right? The fourth thing, not to forsake assembling together in corporate worship, word and accountability. 2 Timothy chapter 2.
Listen, you can watch all TV preachers as much as you want, but there isn't anything greater than getting on God's presence in corporate. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. And doesn't the Lord come when we gather together? He says he's in the midst, right? He comes and worships with us. If daddy shows up, I'm going to be there. That's where many people drift from the fear of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone what? Cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor. Wow, that means you're going to cut your loose from your past always because we live a life of disconnect so we can connect. Amen? Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself for the letter, he be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work or position. Flee also youthful loss, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. That's associations because associations bring what? Impartation. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to what? Able to what? Teach. Everyone is called to teach. Everything you receive, you should be always think, how can I teach what I'm learning? Patient, which is a part of endurance, isn't it? And humility. Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. And then they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to, by him to do his will. I can tell you every Democrat has been taken captive by the devil. It's downright truth. They've been taken captive by the devil to do his will. And this is not about political. It's about what they promote, an agenda that's Satan's agenda. There is no room for a Democrat in heaven. I'm telling you right now. They're going to be very disappointed. They may think that's a pretty wild thing to say. It's the right thing to say. Anyone that promotes same-sex marriage, anyone that promotes abortion, isn't getting in heaven. No way. Hallelujah. Is everybody Okay. So again, the fifth thing is a disconnect from our past. Why? Because if you don't disconnect from the new, you can't disconnect from the old, you can't receive the what? New. New. He is in Christ as a what? New creation. Old things pass away. Well, you got to cooperate with getting rid of the old things. You can't just keep quoting that same scripture over and over and still live from the past. I'm still shacking up with this Whatever, whatever you're shacking up with. Hello? Even Jesus rebuked the girl, remember? At the well, <laughs> she came for a drink. Boy, did he have a surprise for her. He said, yeah, I know. You've been with four guys, and the guy you're living with right now, you ain't even married to. Hello? He knows. Praise God. Is everybody okay? <laughs> yes. Glory. All right. Let's go somewhere. So we got to constantly disconnect from past things. Amen. He is a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away again without cooperation. Ain't nothing coming new. You'd be quoting that scripture and going in circles. Like a dog who chases his own tail. And we know what the dog means in the Bible. Demonized individual. First Peter chapter 5. So the fifth thing is disconnect from the past. Disconnect from yourself. K 
Carry a shovel in case you got to bury yourself as quick as possible. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. <laughs> you know, I always think about, you know, especially with this women lib and whatever and in the area, well, you know, because they, there's this area to where, well, it's my body. I can do whatever I want with it. No, it isn't. God's the one that created it. You may do what you want to your body, but that's his kid. That's his child who's trying to get into this world. Amen? They're going to be very surprised when they get before him. Now, don't get me wrong. Many people have made mistakes and they've repented. Amen? Um, and probably half the body of Christ has had an abortion. But they've repented and gone forth. And those kids are waiting for them when they get home. Same thing with miscarriages. You kidding? They're all waiting for you. Hallelujah. They're being trained. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Again, elders doesn't mean old person. It means more mature. There are younger people that are more mature than older people. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. God resists the proud and gives grace, which is the way, plan of escape to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Cast in your care upon him for he what? Cares for you. Be sober. Be alert. Be vigilant, consistent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion with a big microphone, saying, seeking whom he may devour. He's just got a big mouth. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith at your connection, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So know that you are not the only one going through it. Amen. Hallelujah. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have what? Suffered, been persecuted, trained, trialed, fried, whatever it takes. You have suffered for the kingdom, not because you brought your own affliction on. Amen. Not because you sinned. Amen. This is not what he's talking about. He means being persecuted. You know, we go through suffering because we cut ourselves loose from the world. We reject those things that are displeasing to God. Your flesh is always screaming, feed me. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Touch those unclean things. Man, I'm telling you, the flesh wants its own destiny. That's why the Lord kept telling him, go pray. Why? Because he said, <laughs> your spirit's willing, but your flesh is weak. Oh, Hallelujah. So in this suffering, well, what happens after your suffering? Listen, when God rebukes you, is that a part of suffering? When he chastens you, is that a part of suffering? Yeah. It's correction and direction, isn't it? After you have suffered a while, then what's going to happen? Perfect. Then what? Establish. Then what? Strengthen. Then what? Settle you. So how many of y'all love suffering? Y'all ought to lift your feet in the air. And to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. So the sixth thing is submit to God's authority. Maintaining humility and rejecting pride. Submitting to what? God's authority. Maintaining humility and rejecting pride. Psalm 37. Requirements. Now, these are just a few of them. First one's endurance. Second one's sanctification. Third one's being filled. Fourth one is assembling. Fifth one is disconnecting from the past. Sixth one is submitting to God's authority to maintaining humility and rejecting pride. Can you reject pride if you don't maintain humility? No. Can you maintain humility without enduring? No.
Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. He said, don't fret. That means don't fear. Don't get freaked out. Don't get jealous. Don't get envious. Because somebody's prospering. God has a plan for you. Everything's going to come in due time if you maintain. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and do what? Feed on his faithfulness. Is this word faithful? So he's saying feed on his faithfulness. We're feeding on his word now. Amen? Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your what? Now wait a minute. Is he going to give you any desire of your heart? No. See, the heart, your heart is the core of your desires. That is the core of your being. Your desires are in your heart. Now your heart is the character of your spirit. What your desires are will expose who you are. Amen? You'll know somebody by just what their desires are all, all the time. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he's going to give you the desires of your, well, if you're going to delight yourself in the Lord, he's going to, it, your, his desires are going to come in you, aren't they? Then he's going to give his desires that he placed in your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he's going to bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret and only cause his what? Harm. So we want to trust and feed on his faithfulness. So if you feed on his faithfulness, you're feeding on his word, you're feeding on his trust, you're delighting yourself in him. Amen. That's the seventh thing. Mark 8. Mark chapter 8, guidelines, requirements of destiny. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Everybody okay? Are you getting this? Are you learning? Thank God you ain't burning. You ready to teach us? Get it out and spread the word. See, God is always arming us, isn't he? He's arming us. He's preparing us. Why? Because things are getting crazy out there. The attacks are harder everywhere you turn. Somebody's always throwing a fiery dart. You got to do a lot of ducking. And you got to duck at the right time. Verse 34, is everybody there? When Jesus had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever what? Desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross and do what? Deny himself, take up his cross and what? Now listen, when you deny yourself, you repent also. Does everybody understand? In other words, when you do something that's promoting yourself, you repent like sin. So repentance is a part of your life because we're always activating the blood. The blood is activated and that allows the spirit because the blood always goes before the spirit. See, then when there's pride there, the spirit is not going there. He'll send a message, convict, 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 turn, repent, repent, repent until we repent of what we're doing, which we know is wrong. Listen, we're under a different scale here. We're not under the ways of the rules of the world. We're under the ways of, ways of the rules of eternity. There is difference. We're not under the law of the world. We are under the law of God Almighty. It is different. We are more accountable. What the world approves and what you and I approve are two different things. Does everybody get it? It is different. And we must begin to live the standard that he has set for us, not according to what we've inherited as a carnal head. 
Amen? Things that we've in traditions and everything else. We must begin to live the standard that he has preset for us so we can meet every condition in advance. You won't meet those conditions if you're living and compromising according to the ways of the world. That's why he says, deny yourself. Take up the cross, which means to fight. Amen? If you're not a fighter, you're not going to advance. And then you can follow him, because you can't follow him without a fight. For whoever desires to save his life is going to lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what would a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Wow. Wow. So the eighth thing that I wanted to talk about is we must be quick to repent. Amen? We must be quick to what? Repent, expose our own stuff. Turn from it. Listen, you can't keep repenting and keep doing the same thing. Lord, forgive me. It's Friday, though. I'll meet you Sunday, right after church. It don't work that way. <laughs> Ecclesiastic 12. Ecclesiastic chapter 12. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Requirements of destiny. Meeting to get the conditions to what? Advance. Verse 13, let's speak it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It's real simple. Fear God and keep his commandments. Keep his word. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. That is the conclusion. And I want to close at Psalm 15. Psalm 15. What does the Lord say? The Word says, early will I seek you. Early will I seek. See, there must be a meeting place for you and God every morning. Every morning there's a place for you and Him to meet. He establishes that. If you're not meeting Him every morning, then you're meeting pancakes and eggs. You know, people are stuffing their face before they meet Him. Never feed yourself before you see Him. Don't get me wrong, go in the prayer closet with a cup of coffee, amen? Go in there with a cup of tea, but never fulfill your flesh first. Let him be your fulfillment. What does it say? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who what? Walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. He whose eyes, whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. In other words, he doesn't associate with an individual that's a promoter of sin or the flesh. He hates sin. See, you and I should hate sin. And we, in fact, we should hate anything that's out of God's time. Everything. Anything that's not of God's time, we should hate. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change, no matter what people say, no matter what's going on, and you're going to endure because you're going to meet the Lord at that same meeting place every 
morning. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved out of position or his calling. Amen? He'll never be moved. Praise God. Requirements of destiny. Just a few guidelines. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we ask that you'll impart into remembrance, bypassing our brain and into our spirit, and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring this to remembrance to us, that we may abide according to the requirements and the conditions to be met, that we may advance in our calling and be found faithful for position, for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.